What's going on YouTube? It's time for a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. I'm going to try to bring the energy to this battle video. I, this has just been one of those weeks, guys. So we're going to bring the energy, the passion, all the yelling of like a, a at least a 30-minute Dragon Ball Z yelling. No, okay, we don't need to do that. Today's battle is a battle I had against Gold, a.k.a. Ninten Hero. I'll leave his Skype in the description if you're interested in battling him. I brought, once again, an odd team. Uh, this was back when I was toying around with Mega Blastoise, which is a fantastic offensive spinner. I think it's really hard. Um, of course, we also have Dry Skin Heliolisk, which pairs nicely with Pokemon that are weak to water, such as Steelix, who is there to set up rocks. Gorgais Small is a great um, status spreader, just because he's so fast. Base 99 speed. I'm sure you all have seen him before. Uh, and I like to run subseed with mine. Uh, this was my first time using it, so I kind of misplayed it horribly. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And, of course, we also have Silk Scarf Ambipom with Fake Out on Last Resort, which hits insanely hard. It's kind of just stupid how hard the thing hit, hits. And then, of course, Specially Defensive Togekiss, because that Fairy Flying typing makes it able to take Fighting type moves really, really easily, and being able to switch it on basically anything, you know, specially based. I thought I guess maybe a, a sludge bomb or something makes it very very fun to use. Now in the beginning here, when I start off with my Gore guys, he just starts off with Cresselia. I burn him because I was stupid. I should have set up the substitute, uh, and I do get paralyzed as he sets up screens, which is okay. I I do get that nice residual damage between the burn and the leech seed, and I should have figured that he was going to switch out because he's taking a ton of residual damage now, and I should have either substituted up. Or use Leech Seed again, um, and I think I just tried to um, Pain Split, which was a bad idea. But, you know, uh, I ended up just staying in because I didn't know what type of... I thought he was just going to set up Stealth Rocks. But he's actually an offensive Empoleon, as we see from the Life Orb Recoil. And now is a good time to just bring in my uh, Reginalisk. Go for an attack. I'm going to end up switching out here. I should have just went for Volt Switch in the first place. But that's okay. Uh, Ice Beam is... Not going to do much to my specially defensive Steelix here. And I'm going to get a free opportunity to set up my Stealth Rocks. I know he's probably going to bring in Sand Slash to spin them away or set up his own rocks. But that's okay. I want him to spin them away. Uh, because that means he won't be attacking that turn. And so I'm going to bring in my Blastoise here because it's a great opportunity to Mega Evolve. I figured he would bring back in Cresselia just to take the hit. But I didn't think Cresselia could take a Water Pulse and a Dark Pulse after taking Burn Damage. Uh, so even if he had Wish or Moonlight, uh, or even Lunar Dance, if he tried to go back out with something else, he wouldn't really have that opportunity to do so. Now here, I really did think that an Aura Sphere would KO the Red Giants, but I can't actually KO it without help from Stealth Rocks. So he's able to barely live, and now I know I'm not faster, so I went on to Reginalist expecting um, maybe a Thunderbolt. But he goes for rest, and he has a Chestal Barrier, and I was like, dang it, I should have just stayed in there. Uh, but of course, maybe I would have gotten paralyzed, who knows. Uh, this Ice Beam is actually not going to KO me, which is fine. I could have gone for the Volt Switch, but I didn't want to take a little bit more life for it right there. So I just hard switch directly out into Blastoise. And he just keeps on going for Ice Beams, which means I think he may have been predicting me to switch. Because uh, uh, Thunderbolt is pretty standard on uh, Red Ice right there. And there he finally goes for the Thunderbolt, but not, un not until it's a little bit too late there. Because he definitely could have taken me out with two Thunderbolts. Uh, it's not going to matter too much that he did that because he does have Mega Alkazam, which outspeeds everything on my team, which made my Ambipom really critical to keep around here because I need it for hitting this thing with Fake Outs because that's the only priority that I have. And so Sil Scarf boosted uh, Fake Out is actually going to do, I think, a little under half to Alkazam. Uh, I expected him to switch out in the Sand Slash, so I just double back out into 
my Heliolisk. I hit him with a Surf. And now I have, I think I have two attacks left, but I'm not faster than Alakazam. That thing is blazing fast. Uh, and I didn't really have anything that I wanted to take special hits besides Togekiss. And I was worried that he might have Psy Shock, but fortunately he just has Psychic. And I, after I saw the first call mine, I went for the Paralysis just to slow him down into a non speed tier where, you know, Deoxys and Didjask are hanging out. But after I see Call Mine and now I know that I'm faster, he's gonna just, just thank you, sir. Claps, claps, we have claps here, lots of claps. Because if you're going for those, that means I can switch out again. Um, I could have gone for those wonderful Paraflinch uh, shenanigans, but I would rather force him out while he's forced to go for Call Mines than um, uh, try to Paraflinch him down there. Because I just don't really want to get hit by that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't carry Roar on this Steelix, and since I paralyzed him, my Gyro Ball won't be as effective, so I just went for Earthquake to put him in the range where a Fake Out could easily KO him. He goes for Psychic, and even though I'm especially defensive, a plus 3 Psychic from a Mega Alakazam takes me out from that range of HP, and the Fake Out is just going to be able to easily finish him out, which is fine by me. Uh, he goes back out to Empoleon. I don't think Empoleon can do much to Togekiss, even with Ice Beam. And so I am definitely going to paralyze him just like before. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have Aura Sphere on this Togekiss. That would have been really nice here. Um, but after I see the damage from that Surf, I know I need to roost up. Otherwise, I probably won't be able to take an Ice Beam. Actually, I wouldn't be able to take anything from that level of HP, really. And he does go for Ice Beam, which is nice because since I lost my Flying Typing because I roosted for the turn, it, it barely does the amount of damage of, say, my Leftovers. Um, I actually just ended up going for Air Slash there. I'm just trying to get some residual damage here. I wanted him to actually go ahead and KO my Togekiss so I could just bring in something and finish him off. Uh, but I actually ended up flinching him, paralyzing him down to death, which is Empoleon can't defeat Togekiss. So uh, that was fine by me that he kind of left it in the way that he left it in there. Now this leaves him with his hair across, who I'm about 99% sure was scarfed. Uh, and that's going to easily wipe out my Togekiss. Again, important that I keep Amipom around. I get a critical hit with that Fake Out. That may or may not have mattered as you see by the damage there. Fake Out can do about 48 to, I think, 50.1% damage by itself. And of course, critical hits of this generation uh, do only 50% more damage. So if I got minimum damage on all on both of my Fake Outs, then he probably would have survived. Whereas if I had gotten normal to max damage, then he would have been KO'd. So that was a really, really fun game. I made a couple of misplays, especially with Gorgas there in the beginning. But at the end of the day, it's just fun to kind of use new Pokemon. In my battle boxes, I have all my Pokemon that I Pokebagged over from black and white, which is everything that I trained all the way back going to third gen. Uh, and then I have just four boxes of the things that I trained in X and Y. And that way I have all my old teams organized the way they were, even by type or if I had specific teams built together. Which is fun because a lot of teams that I had in black and white just aren't optimal in X and Y's metagame. Uh, so you have to switch them out a little bit. But then I have all the Pokemon that I've bred in X and Y in four lower boxes. So uh, I'd be interested to hear how you guys arrange your Pokemon, especially with Pokemon being available just all this space, you just want to just fill the space with things, just breed 200 Zubats, and that would fill only, wait, 30 Pokemon in a box, that's, that's only going to fill, like, maybe eight boxes, I don't know, tops, anyways, have a good weekend, guys, I, I'm recording this in the morning for once, as opposed to when I get off work, uh, we're traveling this weekend a little bit. Uh, and you won't see me on social media for a little while. Uh, I'll probably be back on it next week. I'm just disconnecting a little bit, which is fine. But uh, I hope you all did enjoy the battle. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed. I normally don't say that, but uh, I've been getting a little bit more likes on my videos lately, and I really do appreciate that, you guys. Taking time to hit that like button matters more than you know, just because it pushes content to more people, and it also just lets people who have similar views to your videos, uh, it makes my videos pop up in their suggested videos because it has a lot of likes and views. So if you all hit that like button, I would appreciate it, the video will appreciate it, and it'll be basically a kid to give your Pokemon a Pokepuff. Which, why wouldn't you give your Pokemon a Pokepuff? 
it makes them happy and little hearts pop out. Make me that Pokemon. Hearts pop out. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye now.